I want to move on to segment two. And this is a, now this is another sort of narrative of, of prostate cancer. This is the non-metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer. We talked about the patient that has metastatic castrate sensitive disease. We picked them up by imaging or, or they presented de novo with, with widespread metastatic disease. It's really almost like a, a different clinical path than the patients that present with localized disease, get localized treatment, at some point recur, rising PSA, get put on hormonal therapy, respond for a long period of time. The natural history of these patients that evolve into non-metastatic castrate resistant disease might be eight or 10 years. So we're, we're looking at a pace of disease that's much more chronic. Um, and yet, it, it largely neglected until recently. And there's been a series now of, of three large international phase three studies to demonstrate an improvement in, in a new endpoint, metastasis-free survival. Um, and, and Ben, can you walk us through these studies, Prosper, Spartan, Aramis, and, and kind of what, what have they taught us about this disease biology and, and what do they tell us about, you know, some of the newer findings we'll get to uh, from ASCO this year? No, thanks. So, you know, it, it's, it's interesting because this is a disease state that didn't really have a name, you know, before. I mean, it, it, it sort of was defined when we had options to treat it. I mean, these were the patients that had been put on uh, ADT at some point because purely of a PSA because of a biochemical recurrence because by definition they don't have metastases. Some of them may have been early failure of uh, treatment for with radiation and had been on an ADT but a lot of these were patients that you know essentially were treated for uh, PSAs before, right? So it, it, you know, there's a, there's a whole discussion to be had about, should we have these patients much anyway? Should we be, you know, shouldn't we be, uh, should we have treated, started them on ADT? And, and that, that rewinds the clock a little bit about, you know, how are we, who are these patients to begin with? But that being said, eventually many of these patients were failing. And then that's when we were, sort of had the head scratching moment of looking at a patient saying, you don't have metastases. I can't find metastases. You're on your, at this point, just standard ADT. And, you know, I don't really have anything else for you. It doesn't make sense to offer you chemo. And even the newer, the novel agents um, weren't really for this uh, at, at that time. Um, but then, and it feels somewhat like it's, it's a long time ago, but it's only two years ago, uh, we had the readouts of several trials that were looking at, okay, for the highest risk of those patients. So not the patient that's got a slow PSA, uh, but those patients with doubling times of, of less than 10 months, and, and, and all three studies use that same indicator. Um, and that, that really predicted that they were likely to show METs within the, the following year, that all of those patients um, are, are very high risk in this subset. And, and uh, first was the, the Spartan trial with apalutamide, closely followed by Prosper and enzalutamide, and then about a year later was darolutamide. Um, and they all showed a significant improvement in uh, metastasis-free survival, or MFS. And, and MFS was made some news because it was a new marker. You know, it was, it was an acknowledgement that to wait for overall survival was not practical if we're trying to really deliver on a, a treatment option for patients that had high-risk disease. Um, and, and although now we know how long it would have taken to do that, uh, it, it at the time allowed for these studies to be framed in, in, a, in a more reasonable, uh, um, although somewhat controversial uh, framework. So uh, metastasis-free survival was deemed to be a, a, a reasonable exploratory endpoint um, by the FDA, which allowed these trials to move forward. And they all showed a significant reduction uh, um, in the risk of metastases uh, with um, a, an approximate, they're, they're, all the data was relatively similar, an approximately two-year benefit uh, over placebo and metastasis-free survival and hazard ratios that uh, were 60 to 70 percent risk reduction. So, I mean, it's a, a really remarkable set of trials that showed showed a, an improvement that we just don't see typically um, in a disease state that we knew was worrisome but didn't have any options for before. Right. No, and, and I think that's a really, you know, it, it was groundbreaking from that perspective to understand it. But it was a, a little bit of, a, of an unproven endpoint. Tying that to overall survival, really a very proven endpoint, has been sort of the missing link up until just recently. 